What's wrong with GE? GE's third quarter 2017 results confirmed what many smart investors and analysts have been saying for the past five years. The stock is a value trap. From the outside looking in, the company had all the makings of a business that could create a high-flying stock, but it never happened. While the stock market has been on a tremendous bull run over the past nine years, in that same nine year span, GE stock has just been eh, for a lack of a better word. It truly was a value trap. What's a value trap? And why did analysts and investors think GE was and is a value trap? So a value trap in the stock market is a stock of a company that meets certain criteria and looks great on paper. But in the real world, the company fails to materialize what's on paper. A company may have a tremendous amount of assets, a low PE and PS ratio compared to its industry and sector averages, and closest competitors. And the company's stock price will be trading at a lower price than its competitors, creating this sense of value. This sense of value is what draws investors in, trapping their investment in a stock that eventually underperforms the market. After a significant amount of time, the company hasn't been able to maximize its assets, its stock price, its PE, and its PS are still lower than its competitors and the industry and sector averages. What has GE been doing to be classified as a value trap? If you're of a certain age, you remember the GE We Bring Good Things to Life ad campaign. In those days, it felt like something GE was in everyone's home, whether it was a GE light bulb or GE appliances. Bringing it back to present day, GE's a different company. After the financial crisis, the company shook a few things up. Synchrony, a GE company and one of the largest providers of private label credit cards was spun off from GE in 2015. GE sold its appliance business in 2016 and is currently looking to sell its light bulb business. It's not the same old GE. Today, GE operates in several different markets and is among the world leaders in some of the markets they operate in. There's the GE power business. 30% of the world's power comes from GE power equipment. Then there's GE Aviation, which is the world leader in providing aviation jets, turboprop engines and components, as well as avionics, electrical power, and mechanical systems for aircraft. Then there's GE Healthcare, GE Digital, GE Renewables, Baker Hughes GE, GE Transportation, GE Energy Connections, GE Additives, Current, powered by GE, GE Lighting, GE Capital, and GE Global Research. So as you can see, there's a lot going on at GE. So what's wrong with GE? Some believe it's all those different businesses and divisions that were just named. Many analysts and investors believe the company would be better off breaking GE up into several smaller companies. But before we get into breaking the company up, let's look at the management. Underperforming companies are usually tied to an underperforming management. Jim Emmel led GE from September 7, 2001 to his retirement on August 1, 2017. It was a tough run for Jim Emmel, being named CEO only four days before the 9-11 attacks. Emmel took over GE while America was struggling with the burst of the dot-com bubble and had to maneuver the company through 9-11. Then there was the financial crisis to deal with, and as of recently, the drop in oil prices. However, in the same span of Emmel running GE, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has increased 128%. The stocks of Honeywell and United Technologies, some of GE's closest competitors, have increased by 285% and 262% respectively. While Honeywell and United Technologies were able to navigate the ups and downs of the economy and markets, GE under Emmel was not. A new beginning. John Flannery was named the new CEO of GE, and Jim Emmel, feeling comfortable in Flannery's understanding of the company, retired three months earlier than expected. John Flannery is known as a turnaround guy. He was able to turn around GE's healthcare business when he took over the division. But can he do it again? Flannery admits that GE has not performed well for its owners, but he believes going forward the company will create the most value from a core portfolio of businesses. From Flannery's recent interviews, core business focus and cost cutting is what will right the ship at GE. Flannery has stated that within GE, there are too many resource-intensive businesses with no prospects. Flannery wants GE to renew its focus on healthcare, aviation, and energy. The recent cut to GE's dividend from $0.24 cents to $0.12 cents per quarter shows that Flannery is serious about making cuts. Flannery believes the dividend cut is the right decision in order to align the company's dividend payout to its cash flow generation, which makes sense. This announcement sent the stock price reeling again. GE is one of the most widely held stocks in the world. Many retirees living on fixed income rely on GE's dividend payments to supplement their income. For 2018, Flannery has put GE's focus on building a strong cash position, balancing capital allocation, limited M&A, R&D investment, and disciplined financial policy. 
Many analysts and investors wanted a more aggressive approach from Flannery, like breaking up the company to extract the value. Flannery noted in one interview that there was a time when people wanted GE to sell its aviation business, and now it's a very successful business under GE. Flannery feels the issues that GE faces now were some of the same issues that he faced when he took over the healthcare business, and as mentioned before, he was able to turn that business around. Flannery believes GE has the customers and the revenue, but they have to run the business better and manage the company's assets better. A few years ago, GE had a 2018 outlook of $2 per share. Now expectations for 2018 earnings per share is a dollar to a dollar and seven cents. GE also plans to borrow six billion dollars to fund its pension plan, which will add to the company's already huge debt load. Flannery admits the turnaround is going to be a heavy lift, and many analysts agree with him, downgrading the stock even more once GE releases 2018 outlook. What does the Civil Report think about GE? Understanding what Flannery wants to accomplish at GE, an investor will need to keep in mind that GE is not a one-year fix. GE is a big shit, and pivoting the company and moving it in a new direction will take lots of time. We like Flannery's plan to cut costs. Cutting costs to us is the easiest thing to do for an underperforming company. We expect to see divisions within GE shut down or downsized or sold off. We also expect layoffs to come as well. How the market reacts when this occurs is anyone's guess. We believe a concentration on cost and better management of the company's assets, as John Flannery stated, can be the start of better days for GE. The patient investor will be rewarded by GE, but it won't be next year. We believe GE stock will continue to drop and base between $8 and $12 before increasing. If you're a believer that you buy when there's blood on the street, then now is the time to buy GE. However, if someone were to invest in GE now, they should have a three to five year outlook. We hope this adds value to your investing if you want to find out more about the Silver Report, go to silverreport.com. Leave us your email to get updates. Happy investing.